Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Red Dirt Rods. This time powered by American Powertrain. This week we're gonna show you how to dial indicate your bell housing for your transmission so that you can make sure that you don't void your warranty, your shifts are smooth, and you don't burn up your transmission. And we're gonna show you how to do it with a dial indicator so you can do it for your project. Okay, so we've got our L83 here. We've got it prepped with the uh, new flywheel and we have our spacer plate for the bell housing. This is very, very important. If your bell housing comes with a spacer plate like this, you have to use it. You cannot leave this off and just do a dial indicate check and then install this later. If you do, it's gonna throw everything off. You have to have any kind of shim plate has to be installed if it is required for your application. Our quick time bell housing uses this little shim plate. So what we've done is we've got our flywheel bolted on. It is torqued down, cleaned. We cleaned it with brake cleaner because you want to have a nice clean surface. And we've got our shim plate. So. How do you adjust one of these? That was a question that was posed earlier. How do you shim a bell housing? Well, you do it with the dowel pins here and here. So basically, when you get an offset dowel pin, it kind of looks like this, okay? Where this would be square, offset would be like this. So what you do is you actually install it in the block and you rotate it until you get the offset in the correct position for the offset of your bell housing. So they come in various sizes. You can order a whole bunch of them and get it all done at once and not have to order them later. But you know, they they run about 25-ish dollars for a set. So if you don't get it right the first time, you're just wasting money. Next we take our bell housing, we orient the bell housing to the dowel pins that are in the block, slide it in, and we're just going to throw a couple bolts in here real quick to hold it in place. You don't have to use the bolts that you're going to use, you can use just some random bolts like what we're using, but what you want to do is you want to go in a star pattern and you want to go ahead and torque it down to spec. Now here's the business end of this process and that is a magnetic base dial indicator. So this is a dial indicator. It is an analog unit. Measures the movement of this pin. It is very sensitive and is very accurate. You can use a digital or you, you can use an analog like this. Analog is more accurate but digital is easier to read and zero. So for this particular project, I had to make a custom stub for our dial base just to get it to fit. So what I'm gonna do, this can be a bit of a pain in the butt depending on how big your opening is in your bell housing. And for the TKX, it's pretty small. You wanna put your dial indicator on the flywheel surface itself not in the center you want it on the flywheel surface so i'm going to go ahead and connect our pieces here so this is just an adjustable arm every kit is a little bit different we got this from summit so i'm just going to slide this in here i'm going to reach in with one hand and i'm going to turn on the magnetic base Right now this is loose, so we can adjust it. The setup part of this is, can be a little bit tricky. So what we wanna do is get our dial indicator 
so that it is as centered inside the opening as possible. Basically what we want to do is hold this in here, tighten this up. So I've got a rough idea of where I want this. I want this as perpendicular to this surface as possible. I'm going to get that adjusted right there. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I'm going to hold this while I tighten. I can make fine tuning adjustments. So now we've got this dialed in. This will just sit here and spin inside this opening. One thing that you need to make sure of when you're checking this is you want to make sure that no part of the mount and no part of the indicator touches anything else. Like there's a stud right inside here. You don't want to touch that. That'll knock your readings off. You don't want to touch anything out on the side. Any, the slightest little movement will, will affect your position. So you want to go ahead and spin it all the way and make sure that it comes back to zero where you started from. So now we're ready to take our measurements. Okay, so we have our dial indicator set up on our bell housing. The bell housing is installed and torqued down. So I've got Brock here. He's going to spin the engine for me so I can watch the dial indicator and I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up. So I have already checked this bell housing so I know exactly how far off it is, but we're going to show you as if we haven't done anything. So first Brock is going to spin this 360 degrees while I watch and I'm going to use my Sharpie and I'm going to make a mark where this goes the most positive. So the positive on a dial indicator is, a, is when it moves off the zero point clockwise. Negative would be if it's going counterclockwise. So right now I'm not concerned about counters. I'm only concerned about positive offset. So Brock, go ahead and crank this thing 360 degrees. So this is the highest point. So we've got a mark right here, okay? This is where we're going to zero this. I'm going to go ahead and spin it all the way around just to double check. It goes back down to zero, negative. Okay, right there. All right. So I already know that this is my zero point. So we're going to take this back all the way around. So this is where we're going to zero this at. So what we do is we just rotate the dial. If you have a digital dial indicator you just hit a button I don't have one I have analog analog is a little more accurate so we've got it zeroed here and what we've done is we're gonna put a hash mark 180 degrees away and then we're gonna do hash marks on the side so basically we're gonna create a cross so this is position one two three, and four. One and three go together, four and two go together. And we're gonna write down these numbers up here. So one is a zero, so that's our 0, 0.000, 0 inches, okay? And that is position one. This is position, one of these hashes here. So this is position one, two, three, and four. Now our engine is upside down. So this is the top. Number one is the top of the position, it's 12 o'clock. In your vehicle, this would be up here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go 90 degrees to position two, and we're gonna write down that reading. Stop. So at position two, we have moved backwards. We are negative zero nine. So that's a negative point zero zero nine inches. Give me another 90 degrees, please. Stop. Now we are negative 19. 0 0.019 inches, okay? This is our maximum. This is how far off we are. I'm gonna go ahead and do another 90 degrees. Yep, right there. 
Okay, so that reading is minus 10. Minus 0 0.010. 0. So what does that mean? What that means is that we are off side to side. We're off top to bottom. Now, all of these numbers get divided in half, okay? Because we're not looking at the diameter, we're looking for this distance from the center point to here, okay? So this is actually 0 0.005. That's in spec. This is 0 0.0045 also in spec. This is not, this is 0.95, so 0 0.0095, it is still off. So now we've got our specs. We know where the bell housing is in relation to the center line of the flywheel. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, like I said, these two, they're within spec. I'm not super worried about these two, it's this one that I'm concerned about. So 19 hundredths, that's way too far. Our target is less than five thousandths. So we have to divide this in half. That's 95 thousandths. That's how much we need to move it. Because we zeroed it at this position, and this is a negative number, we know that the entire bell housing needs to shift this direction by 95 thousandths. As soon as we do that, these two numbers should actually get closer within spec because it's going to go from this point to this point and it's going to change somewhere around here, okay? So that should bring these two in line. Now, if say the numbers were wildly off here and here, we would know that we would need to move this this direction or that direction, but these are basically the same number. This is our big number. We just need to shift it downward. If you're doing this in your garage, in your driveway, at a buddy's house, whatever, you're gonna have to order parts because you don't know exactly what offset you have. So we have to do the same thing. So we're waiting on our parts to arrive. As soon as they get here, we're gonna take this apart, pop out our dowel pins, and show you guys how to fix it. All right, guys, now we've got our offset dowel pins. Now, these are seven thousandths offset, and if you'll recall, our bell housing was offset by nine and a half thousandths. You have to find the closest to your offset, and this should get us there. We'll, we'll be within spec, which is that five thousandths. So what we've got to do first is pull this bell housing. So we're going to go ahead and clean up the inside of the block with some Scotch-Brite. We've got a couple of little burrs and they're not going to go all the way in so just use a little Scotch-Brite see if that'll clean it up enough. Alright, so we're going to take this and we're going to drop it in. Alright, so we're going to install the dowel pins. We're just going to tap them in with the hammer. The orientation doesn't matter because we can adjust it with a wrench once we have our bell housing in place. Right there, till it bottoms out, there's a little groove. That's what we're looking for. Then we install the bolt, but we don't tighten it yet. We're just gonna thread it in. Just gonna seat it. Reinstall the shim. So now we've got our dial indicator set up and we're going to go ahead and crank this over to our zero point, which is straight down. This is where we were originally zeroed at. Now I'm going to mark that with my silver sharpie and then we're looking for here, here, and here. We should be within that five thousandths range. 
So this is one, two, three, four. So one quick note on the dowel pins. Some dowel pins align with this slot, being that the offset uh, plane is vertical with this slot. And then on these ones, there is a mark right here on the front that indicates the highest point. So not all dowel pins are the same. So our position should be shifting this directly up. Now let's see what we've got. Okay, Benjamin, go ahead and bring it back a couple degrees. All right, so I'm gonna zero it. All right, our number one position, we are at zero. Now we're gonna go 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Stop. At 90 degrees, we are 0 0.005. That's within spec. Another 90 degrees. We are at 0 0.006, which is within spec because that gets split in half. Go ahead. Perfect, and that's at basically 0 0.001. Okay, so it took a second, but we've got our bell housing dialed in. We are now perfect. We're within five thousandths all the way around. Now our engine is safely set up with the bell housing to install the transmission. Now that we've got everything dialed in, now we can tighten down the bolts. And that's all there is to dialing in your bell housing. So we've got this perfectly aligned. We're within spec of five thousandths. We've tightened down our dowel pins and we're ready to install our transmission. Of course, we still have to pull this off, put the clutch on and do all that stuff, but that's for another time. Thanks for watching. Let's make magic.